Friends, will you pray with me? And as you feel so comfortable, I, enjoy, I invite you to join me the second time through. Let the words of my mouth and the meditations of our hearts be acceptable in thy sight, O God. Let the words of my mouth and the meditations of our hearts be acceptable in thy sight, O God. Edward Hicks had a painting that is probably one of the most famous depictions of this text we heard from Isaiah. It was called The Peaceable Kingdom. It was his imagining of this scene that Isaiah paints for us today. His is the most famous, but over the years there and generations, there have been many depictions of this idea of the wolf and the lamb, often it's a lion and a lamb together, these creatures who in the natural world are thought of as enemies, predator and prey, together, peacefully existing. We've seen it so much and heard it so much and had it ingrained so much, I think, in our psyches that it has lost some of its power. We look at that picture and we go, oh yeah, lion, lamb, great. And we don't think about what a radical change to the world that would be. Very often when things are changing in the world, there are arguments that that is not normal or things are not natural. We have a sort of push and denial of things transforming. This, too, was part of the push against Christ and his ministry in the world. He pushed against tradition and what everyone thought of is just the way we do things. Think of one of his most famous ones, right? To love your enemies. Again, something we hear so often, oh yeah, love your enemy, that we fail to recognize what a radical concept this would have been. In a tradition and a people who have thought of, you know, God will smite my enemy. I can pray. For God to come in and make my enemy fall in the battlefield. Jesus is coming in and saying, nope. Pray for the benefit of your enemy. Pray for the well-being of your enemy. In this writing in Isaiah, Isaiah is seeing this prophecy of the lush forests of Jesse's lineage, of David's kingdom, cut down. He is a little bit ahead of his time. This would happen when the Assyrians come in and take over and destroy all that is precious to this people. But he sees new growth to come. But it is not the same. It is not what they expect. It is not the wolf chasing down the kid. It is not being led by a mighty king, but by a child. And despite this prophecy being part of the taught tradition for generations before Jesus came, there were still so many who found Jesus' birth and ministry to be unexpected for the Messiah that they had hoped for for so long. This was to be the king of kings, David's line of replacement. 
And yet, he was born of a young woman, a poor woman, from a nowhere town. You know, like Hancock, Benny. Some little tiny town. And when he grew up, he did not gather armies to conquer, but instead preached love, care for those marginalized and oppressed. And instead of overtaking the Roman oppressors, he was killed by them. Not what was expected. Not what they thought of as natural or normal for a king. What does the new normal, it's a phrase we hear a lot of times, usually after some sort of tragedy and things shift, or now after, say, a pandemic. We have the before times. Right? And we have our new normal. But what does the new normal of God's reign look like? Of Isaiah's vision look like? It looks like a world in which not even animals hunt other animals for their food. That seems just impossible to even imagine, right? Could we possibly keep our minds open to the ways in which the world might shift and change in ways that feel completely unnatural to us? but are part of the progression towards God's hope and desire for this world. We speak of peace on this week. We imagine what peace might look like, what, fe what it might feel like. But we don't we don't know. Peace itself might feel a little unnatural to us. I remember preaching on this text at my home church in Hudson uh, when I was uh, in seminary, maybe in seminary, maybe my first year out of seminary. No, I think I was still in seminary. Uh, they were without a settled pastor, and I was called in as pulpit supply for Christmas Eve. No pressure. <laughs> and, and this was one of the texts that we read that night. And I remember standing at the front of the church and looking out over these people, many of whom had known me since I was four years old, watched me grow up, and I had watched them age, and here I was as an adult speaking to them and listening to those words at the end of this passage where Isaiah says, and they will not hurt or destroy on all my holy mountain. And being in tears, thinking of the generations after generations who had joined together on Christmas Eve to welcome the Prince of Peace while there was war going on in the world. We do not know true peace yet. It will be someday a new normal. It will have to take a significant amount of discomfort on our part, of an open mind to what that might look like, of remembering 
the wolf and the lion and the lamb and the kid, peacefully coexisting, to imagine that we humans might do the same. So the next time we hear someone say, well, that's not normal, or that's not natural, maybe we might just nudge them to remember the dream of a world where the natural and the normal don't exist, for something far better has taken its place. Amen. Um.